Today is A Day. What is A Day? Yearly assessment day. <laughs> so I thought, why not do a video and explain the process, everything you need, start to finish, because even myself, we get a little bit squeaky bum time when it comes to assessments. They put assessment in front of it and it just gets a little bit scary. So why not do an informational video explaining the whole process? Let's get into it. So what is assessment day? For me, it is with a company called Napit, which is like a governing body, which allows you to basically sign off certs and you're attached to that governing body. So then people recognize, oh yeah, you're Napit certified and things like that. Um, whenever people ask that, that is basically the short answer of it. One day a year, they come out, they come out and assess you, they come to your jobs and they see what type of work you have been doing and see if you're basically up to scratch and up to standard and following all the procedures basically and it can be a very very nerve-wracking day for some people especially if you are starting your business and you're starting fresh like last year was our very first assessment and it was a bit like oh what do i do what do i need what do i need to show like it's 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 nerve-wracking and i'll be honest even myself i was a bit like all weekend i've done it before i already know how it's gonna go i've done it before but it's like all weekend it was just like We've got the assessment, we've got the assessment and all that. And I think this video is going to help a lot of people starting an electrical business and or wanting to start an electrical business, but don't want to make that jump because they don't know how to prepare to make that jump. So I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity as we've done it today, as we've just been through the process to show you guys, obviously not fully the process, not show you the actual process, but show you how to prepare and what is involved on the actual day. So... Let's go through everything you're going to need to prepare for the assessment. So what we have is a massive folder full of all the paperwork. When you whack this out in an assessment, they sort of already, they sort of already twig that you've got your paperwork, you're prepared, you're not scruffing it all up and like it's just one big ball of mess and you're just literally taking it out of the van. And when you get a folder like this, always have a folder like this, smart presentable and it just you can keep everything in here so this is what we have so this is what we take on the day this has got all our paperwork and what are the paperwork for the assessment they give you this checklist which basically like the different categories that you go in so pat testing um eas eis which is what we'd be doing electrical inspector scheme they basically give you a whole checklist of everything that you need to have and have on you on the day so for example you're going to need all the regs books. So what is the paperwork that they want to see on the day? There is multiple bits of paperwork. I'm not going to lie, lads. So let's get into the first bit of paperwork, which they asked for, which was the insurance policies. So basically your public liability and your indemnity cover. I think that's how you say it. Um, so you need those two covers and basically print them out, have them in here, ready to go. Paperwork number two is, I think the next bit they wanted was a health and safety policy it is basically for your company that says blah, blah blah we're safe and sound and this is the policy if anything does happen this is this is basically the procedure that we go through so you can get a template of these online or make it up yourself it's completely up to you but that is the second piece that they require the third piece is basically a complaints record as you can see it's just basically a table and we've got no complaints at the minute. So, which is good, which is good. A year and a half into business, no complaints. But if you do get a customer complaint, you have to jot it down and record. Um, so you just have to record it down on here, this customer, this address, etc., etc. This is what they want to see as well. GS38, which is all about your voltage testers, safe isolation procedure, etc., etc. Basically, that document they want to see, which is the guidance no GS38 fourth edition. A big one is calibration certificate. So whatever tester you've got, you need to make sure that it's got at least one year of calibration on it, or within the one year. So um, make sure you have that calibrated you have the certificate to go with it because they take photos of all these documents so they've got it their end as well and then the certification so whatever job you're showing them make sure you print off the cert so you've got it to hand and then you can show them all the cert so they can look over all the circuits the pfc the ze at db and everything like that so you've got a paper copy of the actual electrical cert one question you might have and one question which i had when i was signing up to it was I've just started the company, so 
if I don't have the software, how am I meant to like provide them with a cert? Which is a valid, valid question. But what you can get is paper certification. So you can get a paper certification or you can download a template online, print it out, and you can do it that way and show them that way that obviously you've done a cert, you've written up the cert, you've done the full test, etc., etc. But what they do with NAPIT, which is good, when you sign up to it, like before you've even done your assessment, they let you have access to the fast test. So then you can start doing your certifications and then they can look over them when they do the assessment. That's pretty much everything in terms of in this folder, keep it nice and neat. But the most vital uh, bit of paperwork is of course your qualifications. So this is a massive, massive stack in here. There's about 16 pages of qualifications, <laughs> mental. All these qualifications to become an electrician is crazy, but that's a big thing that they want to see, especially on the first one. They want to see all your qualifications, all your documentations to say, I am a fully qualified electrician. I've done my 2391. I've done my 18th edition and we're all up to scratch. What else is on the tick list is obviously all your regs books. So you've got your big regs book. You've got your on-site guide. We have the NAPIT uh, code breakers book and then we've all also got the inspection and testing one thing i will say about this is that further on in the video i explain but to have these tags in this section is a blinder of an idea trust me they also ask for like loads of approved documents which you can download they give you the link to download and you just keep it on your phone it is far too many pages to print off but as long as you've got it on your phone that is completely fine and in terms of paperwork i think that is all of it all wrapped up the next thing they'll be checking is tester so make sure you've got like an up-to-date tester they take a photo of the tester serial number make sure you have the serial number of the tester to hand as well because obviously you should be putting the serial number on every single cert and then they also ask for a lock off kit and a proving unit and voltage testers to make sure that you are doing the safe isolation procedure correctly. I say it's a nerve wracking day, but as soon as he comes, the assessor's brilliant. Like it's chilled out, it's formal. It's like just quite a nice conversation. Nine times out of 10, the assessor has already been an electrician. So he knows the crack, he knows the real life. He knows what goes on on jobs. And yeah, they're just, it's pretty chilled i know it's nerve-wracking because they put assessment in there but it's a pretty chilled day once all the paperwork side of it's done it still doesn't kind of stop there so it kind of just asks you like loads of different questions so today he asked me what was the ZE values for tncs tns tt system he sort of just does like sort of sharp questions that you should know off the top of your head if you've been doing it a little while and it's just like sort of simple questions and then after he's done all that he asks you to read out a circuit read out the values that you got for the testing on the job you're about to show him after that he gives you five questions to answer so he like gives you this sheet where there's like five questions to answer which could be anything he's got multiple sheets that he could give you on a day so it completely changes every single time one of the questions was like what is the minimum size for supplementary bonding things like that and to be fair he's just like you can use any way to figure it out regs book whatever and this is where the tags come in handy because we're sitting there and he's like oh yeah find the answers and i'm like a bit of squeaky bum time because obviously when you when it's on a day it's a bit nerve-wracking isn't it but when they have these tags we're like special locations boom done yeah that's that answer sorted yeah brilliant you know how to use the regs book and you know how to find the questions you have to get four out of five right otherwise you've got to redo all the questions five out of five no problems no questions asked once all the questions are done we then go into site and he sort of just wants you to explain what you've been doing on the job uh what you've done how you've done it like did you drill through the joists have you done it chasing out things like that and just talking about the whole process of the job the job i showed him was an occupied rewire that we have been doing which has been an ongoing job because it's been they've been living there they've we've had to rewire bits get the power back on so it's an ongoing kind of job so we just had to explain the process show them all around show them that we fitted fire rated down lights show them that just, just the basic stuff really you've got the bonding for the gas and the water the fuse boards up to scratch metal fuse board he did say like bg if you show me a bg board i'm like crossing you off <laughs> basically um but yeah we talk around the job and then you carry out a few tests on some of the circuits just basically another day in the office 
nothing too major. Another day in the office, you just do the ZS, RCD tests, ring cons, um, isolation of the board, things like that. And it's just just another day in the office. Just treat it as another day's graft, lads. There's no, there's no reason to overthink it. I think a lot of people overthink it and just like worry themselves up but if you're already doing good installations and you're already like good with your testing and things like that you have nothing nothing to worry about i'm a worrier myself and i do worry and i just think oh, oh what's that and it, they take one look at it as soon as they see like first of all you've got the files and you've got all the paperwork in check they know they know you're going to be decent and then they have a look at the job and they look oh yeah this job looks amazing they already know they already know you know how to do your job so basically it's not as bad as what you think it's going to be so obviously they go through everything and check everything and they do look out for some flaws in the business or in the company and one of the things that we do get picked up on probably each year is the cpd training because we need to be logging it so cpd training can be literally anything it's basically to show that you are furthering your skills and your experience and your knowledge as an electrician after your qualifications so this could be anything even watching this youtube video right now you could log it as the training but you just have to make a record of it whether you go to an elect show tool fair show whatever that may be reading a sparky magazine it could be anything you just got to make sure that you list it and that you log it other thing is notifying the cert so notifying building control whether that is um, a fusible change a special location if you change the light in the bathroom you need to notify building control and put on the notifying list on the Napier fast test or website, whatever that may be, because they pick up on it. They can see you've notified it at this date, at this time, and if you haven't, they'll be like, you've got three installation certificates with no notifications, so where's your notifications? And, and they pick up on it. So yeah, there are a few things that you've got to look out for and make sure you do before the assessment. So I hope this video has helped showing like what you need for the day and what you need to get prepared for because when I was doing it I was I was blown out the water and I thought what what the hell do I bloody need um but yeah this sort of covers all the basics on the day everything they do throughout the day Sorry most of the video has been me sitting in the van, but I thought I'd do a nice informative video to get you guys prepped and ready for your assessment so then you're not worrying your boots off like, like I do. So yeah, if you have enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'd appreciate if you just dropped a comment, assessment day, stay grafting, whatever that may be, if you made it to the end of the video. So yeah, thank you very much. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay grafting, lads.